interlude. You have been slowly making your way through the underground city of infinity. Product of your dreams, surely. But it feels faintly as though it's becoming more and more real. The bibliomancer's quest is less urgent than it had been, and your legs are starting to tire. For a good while, it was exciting. There were fizzy drinks to sip, music and lights guiding you on, people around you who seemed genuinely free of the sort of worries and troubles that dog you. You've even been given something delicious. Street food that tastes fatty and unctuous, cut with a vinegary sort of pickled leaf. And you crumple the papery wrapper in your hand, trying to keep a hold on what's real. Now, some extended time on your feet later, the city feels like a city. It holds exhaustion and hunger and boredom in its people. Just like every other city on the surface or in reality. Anyone you've ever known anyway. You make a point to walk the dusty roads and look at the architecture is much less futuristic here in this quarter. There might be actual history here. Filigree and geometric patterns carved deep into stone. Markings and language that look flecked with age all over the stone buildings here. Culture predates all of the neon pink and dancing hawkers trying to draw you into their expensive spectacles of light and debauchery. Here, there are water fountains where people bring buckets to gather water. There are chimes to mark time. There are children playing. There are workers clambering up walls to construct new structures. All as you might imagine. But there are peculiarities. The deeply pigmented red-brown dust that packs the roads, that seems to cake and collect in the gutters of the streets along the sidewalks, in amounts that no sweeping could get rid of. As you walk, it's almost as if you have snow underneath you, but it's simply this rose-colored dust, all lit up by gentle, globed street lamps. No one seems to mind or note it, brushing it casually from their eyelashes like cottonwood fluff. You listen to the true hum of infinity, its people, making their way through the darkness of the day. This feels familiar. You ask a few who line the avenues where the librarian is, and they cower away their faces almost bursting mid-speech into inarticulate blurs of features, refusing to become specific for you as a matter of survival. The pink footprints drive you on, unsatisfied. You consider how much of your waking life you spend looking down at your feet. Indeed, this is in part why your shoulders ache, 
wrap around you when you stare at your computer screen. Even now, you're in this fantastical world, and still you feel compelled to look down. So for a little bit, you allow yourself to just follow the paths, the walled streets, the string music, the smells of cooking foods that pull you along. Let the footprints be damned. In the tangle of it all, you see an enormous, gargantuan, almost unbelievably huge gate rising out of stone. An arch that frames two dark wooden doors that look, look older than time. Looking at it at a distance, you squint to see a man visibly emerge from between the doors, almost like he is sneaking in from elsewhere. There's no sound, no clank or crunch, only a swell of citizens that do not seem to notice what you have and idly fill the space between you and the gate. Along the walls as you move, you see printed wanted signs. You can't read much of the language, but you see the drawing of a pleasant-looking man, made to seem dangerous, with a five o'clock shadow and a sour expression. Beneath it are two words in English. They are abundantly clear. Book thief. The most testardly of crimes, you might joke, if you had any thought that someone here would laugh, there must be fifty pasted on this wall alone. So many that the posting itself feels furious, slighted. The eyes on each replicated poster follow you as you walk past them, trying not to seem as if you're paying too much attention to anything as you make your way toward the gate. As you move, you're pulled in the flow of people, current that doesn't give you much say beyond sway, and you see what looks like the same man leaning against a marble column just a few yards ahead. Is this who the bibliomancer is seeking? A friend described the librarian's son. In a faceless city, he seems real, emotive, alive. It seems like this must be right, right? You lean forward, aware that the librarian's son, if that's who he is, is watching you closely. He is undeniably handsome, a dark mop of curls atop his head, with almost a powdery oxblood coal around the blue-gray of his eyes, the dust of the street or something else entirely. His expression is serious, legitimate, concerned, sincere in some way, draws you into his gaze, pulls at something within you, you aren't sure how to name or whether you have the right to claim. He is carrying a brown paper bag that might obscure a bottle of something back in your reality. Here, you have no idea. You try to shout out a hello, wave your arm and tell him to stop, but it seems almost in a moment, even as you are looking right at him, he joins into the blur of the crowd, gone. You blink a moment, 
feeling unsure, wavering, as if the swell of beings might now just swallow you and draw you into their ranks. Just at this time, you are spat out of the matting crowd as they turn back toward the gate, and you find yourself alone in a busy but walkable stone square that looks almost as old as anything else you've seen. Here you can hear yourself think, hear the crunch of the powdery red beneath your now powdery red shoes. The well-marked library rises out of the stone piazza, a monument that seems to dwarf most other buildings save that gate and the chimneys on its roof. A heady plume of red smoke fills the sky, turning all into a hazy purple around the vicinity of the building. You wonder. A delicate noise reaches your ear. You glance down and see your smiley face pin of okayness morph into a question mark, throbbing with the light of a notification. You step into an alley, glancing around for a robot or a hood or someone who might pay some sort of attention to you for this. You press the button, looking around, unsure of what is supposed to happen. In a rush, Golden letters appear imprinted on the air before you. They're handwritten, dashed off, and halfway between cursive and print. They fade swiftly after you read them. I know who you are. Who sent you? It's not safe. If you want real answers, get out of here, and I'll meet you somewhere beyond the mirror soon. Across from the library, just planted in the street, an oval mirror appears. Looking down, the pink footprints just sort of flicker, awaiting your lead, rather than leading you as they have been. You glance behind you as a group with dark hoods follow a very aristocratic-looking gentleman save for the red eyes and sharp vampiric teeth as they all bolt out of the front of the ancient library. The man is holding a book, thick and arcane like a grimoire. He is approaching you, waving his arms in frustration and fury, murmuring something to the goons surrounding him that speeds them up. He is definitely telling you to stop. A surge of adrenaline reaches your toes, your red dusted eyelashes. Whatever on the other side of that mirror is green. This is what you realize as you push through. Or perhaps are pulled through its glassy surface, leaving infinity behind.